everyone and welcome back to the Kids Story Room. I hope you've all enjoyed Chocolate Land. It's been on repeat in our house. Such a great story. Thanks to those who've left us lovely reviews lately. It makes a huge difference in the search engines and it's also wonderful to receive your feedback. So thank you. Also, don't forget to check out our shop at kidsstoryroom.com. And just to note, the kids' medium tees are probably around a size 8, so a small would be the go for a 5 to 6 year old. Okay, so today's wonky wardrobe poem is for a brilliant little person who has been waiting patiently. It's for Avalon. Hi Avalon. Here, finally, is a poem just for you. Avalon's Astonishing Anorak by Anastine. Avalon was walking one day along a wind-swept beach when an anorak came up to her and said, To you I do beseech. I beg your pardon, Avi said, but are you talking to me? Oh, yes I am, the coat replied. Please, madam, do not flee. It's all right, Avalon said. I won't run away, but may I ask what do you want on this very windy day? To keep you warm, the anorak said. That's what I'd like to do. You're only wearing a t-shirt. The wind will chill you through and through. Oh, said Avalon, surprised. Yes, I suppose it is quite cold. My mum did tell me to wear a coat but I didn't do as I was told. Can I tell you a little secret? The anorak whispered loudly. Your mum's the one who sent me. She knew it was getting cloudy. My mum can talk to anoraks? Avi cried in surprise. And she sent you ahead to warm me? She could believe neither her ears nor her eyes. Avi slipped the anorak on. It was very deliciously cosy and it had also been black when she met it, but now it was on, it turned rosy. You're very warm, it's true, Avalon said happily. Yes, of course I am, the anorak sang affably. Where did my mother find you? I've never seen you before. Ah, that's because, dear Avi, I've been hanging behind the front door. I used to be your mum's coat when she was a little child. She was just like you, always out in the wilds. The two of us had great adventures, some on this very spot. Only when it was chilly, though, never when it was hot. And when the day came and I didn't fit, we were both terrifically sad. But your mum didn't hand me on. No, no, she said that would be mad. One day, she said, I'll have a child who will run around by the sea, and she'll need a coat to keep her warm just like you did with me. So here I am with you now, Avi, keeping your arms from the chill. What shall we do? Where shall we go? I am at the command of your will. Pardon? asked Avi. What do you mean? Are you saying we can go somewhere? We can. It's your choice. Think of a place. Then pull my hood over your hair. So Avalon thought of a far away place, a magical fairy city. She pulled the anorak's hood upon her head and suddenly felt quite dizzy. She spun around maybe twenty-three times and when she opened her eyes she was in the realm of the fairies and was wearing a fairy disguise. Avi realised she had wings and rainbow sparkle hair. Her arms and legs were so tiny. She was flying around the city walls Everything here was so shiny. There were fairies galore and mushroom houses and skyscrapers made of flowers. Playgrounds made of grass and pebbles. Avi wanted to stay here for hours. She flew across town to the edge of the glade where she listened to a fairy choir sing. Then she flew down to the ground and drank a dewdrop and joined the dance of a fairy ring. She ate one droplet of a raspberry. She learnt to play fairy flute. She flew up and down and round and round. Her reflection in the stream was cute. She noticed, though, as she admired her wings in the twinkling, clear, lovely stream, that her anorak was not with her now. 
In fact, it was nowhere to be seen. Anorak, are you nearby? Avi called in her small fairy voice. She wondered if she'd have to stay forever, or if she would still have a choice. Avi felt a lovely warm glow and a voice whispering in her ear. When you're ready to go, just tickle your nose. I am here, never you fear. Avi had loved visiting the fairy realm, but she also really wanted to go home. So she tickled her nose with a piece of grass, and again her vision started to roam. She spun round and round about thirty-four times and opened her eyes to the wild sea. Her anorak was zipped up tight, and she was as warm and snug as could be. Wow, thanks, anorak. That was wonderfully fun. You're a most astonishing coat. I'm glad you enjoyed, the anorak said, trying very hard not to gloat. What would you like to do now? the anorak asked, as the wind howled around Avi's ears. I'd like to go home and to see my mum, and her eyes suddenly filled with tears. I'm just so happy that she sent you to me, and I'd like to give her a hug. I bet she's missed you, anorak. She's always had the adventure bug. We had great travels, your mum and I. We saw many places, it's true. But she is happy that I fit you now, and now it is time for you. Avi and the anorak spun eleven times and were immediately back at her house. Her mum was running down the hallway, chasing after a mouse. Mum! Avi cried. Thank you so much. Your anorak is the best. Ah, she's yours now, her mum replied. She's here to warm that chest. Her mum pulled her into a big, tight hug. My darling, it is a pleasure. May you and that astonishing coat spend years chasing treasure. <laughs> <laughs>